Data enablement, a bit of a fancy word that really talks about how people actually use data and how to enable them to use data. So in this video, I wanna share a few best practices and a few pitfalls that tend to get in the way of this and how you can get around those. Hi everyone, my name is Ruben and I'm a data strategist or a professional treasure hunter. And I help companies of all sizes get the most out of their data. So that means finding more insights, turning those insights into decisions, and of course, driving some kind of outcome with it. And one of the fundamental things behind data is actually getting people to use it. I know, crazy idea. You got the data, how do you get people to actually use it? to build reports, to analyze it. So this has sort of become this word called data enablement, all about how you enable a culture or a company or a team on how you use data. Like I mentioned, it's not really that complex. It's just a matter of getting data into people's hands and then helping them analyze it. So I wanna give you a few best practices here on how to best do that and some of the reasons why it's tend to work. Then I'll, I'll finish with a few pitfalls so you understand what kind of things may be coming up. So number one in the best practice world, we want just-in-time training. Training you know, might happen in a group setting, individual setting, ad hoc, there might be documentation, but we really want to be just-in-time. People are just getting familiar with the data. You tell them just what they need to know. It's not the entire data set. You know, you may have a hundred data points or a thousand data points. You're not trying to get them to understand every single data point. They probably only need a handful, you know, five, maybe 10 data points. So we want to focus on that, customize the training as much as possible. I had a client where they didn't have a lot of trust in their data. And all I simply did was come in, audit, make sure there was no technical issues, and then work with each person individually and say, you know what, here are the four or five data points you really care about. Here is the four or five reports that you can build. And here's how to think about this on a, on a regular basis. You know, here's sort of the patterns or ideas to look for. So it's not a, 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 about making everyone a data analyst. It's about giving them just enough they need for their work. Best practice number two is what is the behind the scenes support? At some point, you will need data analysts, you know, we'll need data scientists and data engineers and all that, but they're really behind the scenes. So how does that work? Can people put a request? Is there a channel, uh, some kind of group chat that people can post questions? Is there a documentation that's being created? So this is all behind the scenes. You wanna make sure that's there. You wanna make sure there's people are on backlog. You know, I, I constantly hear from clients, you know, our data analyst is backlogged for the next seven years. We don't want any of that, right? We wanna make sure this is timely, this is responsive, and we wanna be able to automate as much as possible. Number three in the best practice is really about trust. You really wanna maintain trust. When data gets just released, there's typically a high level of trust. And as data goes on, you might lose some of the trust, right? And trust is, is lost anytime anyone looks at a report and says, I'm not sure about this number. This number doesn't quite make sense to me. There's a discrepancy here. And even the smallest discrepancies can cause trust and they just can undermine everything. So we wanna maintain trust. Again, this kind of ties to behind the scenes support, having someone who is there making sure that data is uh, correct. And when any issues come up, as they will, they get solved quickly. Four, we set expectations. How you expect people to work with data will then affect everything. Do you expect to see data in reviews? Do you expect to see in meetings? Do you expect to see reports? Do you expect to people talk about it? You know, I had a client where they had data and they weren't using it. We decided to create a, a data meeting. So every two weeks, everyone would meet, they bring their questions, we talk about it, we spend 30, 60 minutes talking about the data, and that eventually starts shifting everyone to start using data, to start thinking, oh yeah, there's this data point that I might really need, here's happened, this is what's happening here. So this is all about expectations. Number five, get the data everywhere. The old idea of just having the dashboard is outdated. You really wanna have dashboards on desktop, on mobile, you wanna be able to take this on CSV, on Excel, you wanna get email digest, notifications in Slack, all that kind of stuff. So you really wanna build it out and get the data everywhere so people can trip on it. And lastly, let me give you three pitfalls here for you to think about that really tie into the best practices. So one, remember everyone's busy. Everyone already has a job and you know, you know, you can't just give people a part-time job to become data proficient. So you have to make it easy for them. Two, don't focus really on how much data you have or how many data points. You really wanna focus on insights. You know, are you finding insights every week, every day, every month, and how valuable are those insights? And number three, think about what you abandon. You know, Peter Drucker famously talked about companies needing to abandon things, abandon products, abandon customers. The same thing applies here. You really wanna be abandoning things. So maybe reports that don't make sense anymore, KPIs that are irrelevant, segments that don't make 
make sense. Just because you have something doesn't mean you need to keep doing it. You know, I had a client where page speed was really important to them and they were tracking it on a daily basis. And at some point that made sense. You know, they had issues with the, the speed of their websites. So they needed to look at it on a daily basis, but that wasn't the case anymore. Now it really needed to be done once a week. It could be automated, it could be simplified and you could get all this time back. So that's an example of just abandoning a KPI or abandoning the frequency of which you check the KPI. So think about this, think about what you're gonna abandon. I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, look for all those buttons here and the YouTube screen. And I'm really excited to announce the release of my first book, The Data Mirage, Why Companies Fail to Actually Use Their Data. Now the book is not out yet, it's available for pre-order, but there's gonna be a link in the description where you can go learn more about the book, why I wrote it, why I think you should read it, and the different bonuses that are available right now in the pre-order period. The book is available on Amazon, Barnes and Nobles, uh, chapters here in Canada, BAM, anywhere where you can buy books, you'll find it. So make sure to check out that. I would really be appreciated if you're able to buy a copy. Uh, let me know what you think. You can leave a review and I'm looking forward to that. But finally, in the comments below, just put one thing that you learned from today's video. Uh, let me know what, what you thought, maybe what was missing. I would love to read that and other people as well. Until next time, talk soon.